Hey guys and welcome to your next advanced C++ and graphics tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be doing is working on getting input working in the game. So instead of using CN to get input or get chat or whatever to get input, what we're going to be doing is using SDL to get input and we'll be able to get mouse input, keyboard input, uh, events such as clicking on the X button to quit the game. So let's go ahead and run it and I'll show you why we need it. So right now whenever we run our game we can't do anything with this window. We can't even click and drag it. We can't click the X button. We can't do anything we just get this little blue circle uh, that's spinning around because it's not accepting any input we can't type in anything or anything like that because it doesn't actually uh, it's not looking for input so we need to make it actually look for that input we're gonna do what's called polling for events so let's go to our main game dot H and let's make another function we're gonna want to be able to process the input and right now in knit systems is a public function let's go ahead and make this right and put it as a private function because we don't need to call this outside of main game and we're gonna make another private function and it's going to be void process input like this and we also want a game loop we've made a game loop in a previous tutorial so you should be familiar with it so let's say uh, void game loop just like that so we're going to copy these two declarations into maingame.cpp. I'll put them right here. Let's go ahead and get our curly braces set up just like so. Let me zoom in a little. I know it's probably hard for you all to see on YouTube. And let's copy the main game colon colon so that it knows that it belongs to main game. Okay, so in our game loop, remember we're going to want to have a loop that uses a game state uh, to keep just looping through the game and we're going to be processing input with that until the user wants to quit. So we need uh, a game state uh, enum, an enum class for game states. And we can actually declare inside main game or outside main game. I'm going to declare outside main game. I'm going to go ahead and just put it in uh, main game dot h. We can move this around later if we want to. So we're going to say enum class game state and we're going to say the first game state uh, we could say is um, uh, we'll just say play and exit for now we're just gonna have two game states because there's really only two game states that we need to worry about at, the, at this moment so this, this is a really simple game engine right now so we have these two game states and we need to be able to record what the current game state is so let's go to our private variables and say game state current game state or we'll just call it game state. It's pretty obvious that it's the current game state. So we have game state, game state here, and we want to initialize this. So let's go to main game, because we don't want it to be an uninitialized variable. And let's initialize it to play, because we're going to start out playing the game. Oh, that's right, it's an enum class. So remember, we have to say game state colon colon play. We have to give it the scope. So that's our game state. So now we can come down, come down to the game loop here, and we can say while game state is not equal to game state colon colon exit. So we're going to keep doing the, the game loop until the user wants to exit the game. And it's actually underscore game state, just like that, because it's our private variable. There we go. So while we do that, what we're going to do is, for now, we're just going to process input. So this is our main game loop here. All we're going to do is process input. We're not going to do anything else. And we need to call this main game loop from somewhere we're going to call it from the run function so the run function will first initialize our systems it'll set up our window and opengl all that then it's going to call the game loop and this game loop is going to never return until our game state is equal to exit so this is going to be our main game basically this is where it's all going to all the magic is going to happen so now nothing really is going to change except the fact that we are never going to get that uh, press any key to continue because we're in this infinite loop here so I'll go ahead and hit run, and you can see that we will not get that. Compiles a little bit slowly. There we go. So we don't get to press any key to continue. We actually can't exit the game now because there's, there's no way to quit. So just click on your graphics tutorials uh, Visual Studio solution and click the little stop debugging button, and that will stop it. So now we need to process input, and we're going to use SDL for that. So the function we're going to be using is called SDL underscore poll event. And this function, what it does is it basically asks your operating system, you know, what events uh, do we need to process? What has the user been typing in or moving his mouse around on? You know, what has he been doing? Uh, we're going to use this to get those events and then process them. 
So because we are smart programmers and we know how to use documentation, we're going to take this function, we're going to go to Google, and we're going to type it into Google, and it's going to pull up SDL poll event. You can do this with any SDL functions, anything, so you don't need to come back and rewatch these videos as long as you remember what the function name is. If we click on it here, it's going to take us to the wiki page for uh, SDL poll event and the whole SDL documentation. You can search everything there is in SDL. You can find it here. <clears throat> and it's going to show us, here is the actual syntax for it. As you can see, it returns an integer. This is our function declaration. And here it tells you what the return value is. It's going to return a 1 if there is an event, and 0 if there are no events. So if we're not doing anything, we're going to get a 0. And you can think of that as false. Even though this is an integer function, it's only returning a 1 or a 0, which is the same as true and false. Believe it or not, 1 is true and 0 is false. Your Boolean variables, if you cast them to an int and you print it out, you're going to be getting 1 and 0. And it even has example usage here. And down here, uh, we can actually see some other related functions. And so let's go ahead and start using this. Uh, we'll see it takes a parameter here, an SDL event pointer. And what is an SDL event? Well, we can see right here, it tells us what it is. We can click on this little hyperlink right here, and it will take us to that SDL event. And we can see everything about the SDL event, all the things it can do, all its fields. Uh, something that's really relevant to us is this part right here, relationships between event types and union members. We're going to be using these event types. As you can see here, we have SDL quit, that's for hitting the X button. We have SDL mouse motion, that's for moving the mouse around. SDL key down and key up, that's for keyboard events. Really cool stuff. So let's go ahead and use some of this stuff. Let's go back to our code. Here we are in graphics tutorials. So first thing we need to do is make an event structure, an instance of an event. So we're going to say SDL event, and we're going to say EVNT. I like to leave the E out because I think event is a reserved word for certain things, so I just like to call it EVNT. You can call it something else if you want to. And then we don't want to do just one pull event. We could do this. We could just pull that one event, uh, but there may not be any events. Uh, so if we, if we don't check the return value of this function, we're not going to know if there actually was an event or not. So what we need to do is use a while loop. We'll say while event, or sorry, while SDL pull event event is equal to 1 or true. And remember, this is the same thing as just getting rid of this, actually. Even though this is returning an integer, so this is going to be a 1 or a 0. If it's a 1, that's the same thing as true, so it would be like saying while true. If it's a 0, meaning there's no event, it's the same as saying while false, so this will break out. And we're actually supposed to give a pointer to the event, so we're going to put the ampersand here. So this is like passing in event by reference. Remember how we did pointers uh, to do by reference passing? Uh, that's exactly what this is doing. So if this returns true, what it's going to do is take our little event object here and set a bunch of its uh, variables to certain things that'll tell us what event happened. So now, if we get to this part right here, that means we did have an event. So now we can actually process that event. So what we're going to do is look at what type the event was. Was it a mouse button event? Was it a quit event? Was it a mouse move event? So let's use a switch. So we're going to say switch. And then in parentheses, we're going to say event dot type like that. And then inside the switch thing, uh, the switch statement, we can actually check all the different types that we care about. So let's start with uh, our SDL quit type. So if we go up here, you can see this SDL quit type is an SDL quit event. And that means they clicked the X button. So case SDL quit, just like that, and we'll do a break here. So if they hit SDL quit, what we're going to do is we want to quit the game. So we're going to say game state equals game state exit. All right, so let's just test this and let's just see what happens. So all we are doing right now is just handling the quit event. Let's go ahead and run the game. All right, so now you'll notice that little circle that was spinning is now going away because the operating system knows that our little game engine here is processing input. It's accepting input because of this SDL poll event. And what's really cool is now we can drag the window around because we're getting input. And if we hit the X over here, it's going to quit the game. Well, it won't because we have enter any key to quit. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. We do not need this anymore. Goodbye. Look at how small our main function is. Let's run it one more time. Oh, what did I do? Return zero. Can't get rid of that. That is important with SDL. You can't leave the return zero out. If I run it, so now if we hit the X, it quits the game. 
Really cool, right? Let's practice uh, using a few different events. So let's worry about mouse motion. Let's say case SDL mouse motion. I believe mouse motion. Yes, just like that. Break. So now to understand uh, how these events work, what you can do is go to the documentation and we're going to look for mouse motion. So let's go to here it is SDL mouse motion. Now the type of event is SDL mouse motion event. And you'll see this SDL event field is motion. What that means is what we can do is look at the event. And when we hit event dot, we're going to get a bunch of stuff popping up here in the IntelliSense. These are all the different things that this, that this event could be. You can see we have button here. It could be a button event, right? We have drop. It could be whatever that is. We have key. It could be a key event. Now, since we're looking at SDL mouse motion, we should be looking in the motion field because that's what it tells us right here. It says to use the motion event field. So if we go to event.motion dot, then we're going to see a bunch of other things like we have X and Y, X rel and Y rel. So X rel and Y rel are the relative movement. So it's like the amount of pixels in each direction you move since the last time. So let's just use X and Y and we're going to print those out to uh, the, the console. So let's do STD C out. We're going to do event.motion.x and then a space and then event.motion.y and then an indel. So whenever we get an SDL mouse motion event, we're going to print that out and it should be STD indel and we haven't included IO stream. So let's go ahead and do that. Include IO stream. So now if we run it, we should, anytime we move the mouse, this SDL mouse motion event thing should occur. And look, as you can see over here, we are getting it. So if my mouse is moved outside of the window, nothing happens. But if I move the mouse inside the window, you can see it starts to track my mouse movements. So if I go down, you're going to see the Y coordinate actually increases. It's kind of counterintuitive because you would think the Y axis is up instead of down, but it's it's actually the opposite with computer graphics usually. Usually the y-axis goes down because that's the order you process the pixels, so you'll just have to get used to that. The x-axis, as you can see as I move my mouse left and right, and I wish I could make this bigger, I still haven't fixed that zoom issue, so hopefully you can see this. As I move the mouse left to right, then the x-axis, or the, the x-coordinates will increase. And as you can see, all the way to the right, we are at 1024 for the x-axis, and all the way at the bottom, we are at 768. And those are the window coordinates we set right here, the screen width and screen height, 1024 by 768. So the result you get here is going to be uh, corresponding to your screen width and screen height here. So this is a pretty cool episode. We got uh, to learn how to process input. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to be doing some even cooler things.